I wanted to mention that my talk title is Computing with Paper, Not Computing on Paper. Um, so this is sort of important, and I thought it would be thematically appropriate to give my talk on paper. So that is what I'm doing. So what does it mean to com when I say computing with paper? I mean, the, the basic question is, can we build a computer using paper? And what does it mean mathematically to build a computer? Well, the idea is to be able to build a mathematical model of something that can model any kind of computation that you could do on your computer. And we don't care about efficiency or plausibility or requiring less paper than is on the surface of the earth or anything like that. Just <laughs> theoretically, if you had infinite space, perfect paper, et cetera, could you build a computer that could model any computation? And the standard model to do that is a Turing machine. A Turing machine is a formal way of, formali of saying what you can do on a computer. But uh, Turing machines are complicated, and so we want a simpler model that can do the same. And we found a way to do this using Rule 110. So Rule 110 works in the following manner. You have an infinite strip of cells. Each cell is colored white or black. And you have a rule for turning every, every tick, the cells turn into other cells by this rule. So you have each cell looks at itself and the two cells on either side of it and decides whether it wants to switch to black or white based on this rule. So for instance, if we look here, this cell down here is going to be white by this rule. This next cell is going to be black by this rule and so on and so forth all the way down. I'm not going to do this here because I only have six minutes and also you'll get really bored. But if you do this, you can check. I did not cheat here. This is the correct set of cells. You get this. These are called spaceships, and this is the basic. There is nothing interesting going on here in this rule 110. Um, this is the basic background. If you perturb it even a little bit, you can create signals. So for instance, you can see I only perturbed a couple of cells, and pay no attention to the thing in the corner. Um, that was a mistake. Uh, you get a signal heading to the right, and this will keep going forever. Here's another way of sending a signal. You can perturb this a few more, more cells, but in a different way, and now you get a signal heading straight down. And now you can comp compute with how these signals interact. So this is a sheet from the original paper that proved that this is Turing complete. This shows the four ways that one of these is cut off. I don't know why it's cut off in the original paper. But this shows four ways that two signals can interact, this diagonal signal and this vertical signal. And these interactions are enough to model any kind of computation. Now, when we were trying to do this, we looked at this rule. And we said, OK, how do we describe this rule logically? And the answer is, it's actually a fairly simple logical rule. All you need is to be able to do not, and, and, or, and check for equality. And then you get this rule. It's not that hard. So this bring, breaks it down into, can you model logical operations using paper? And what I mean by logical operations using paper is you want to do paper folding, and you want to check that it, is, uh, that it will fold exactly when the operation holds. So here's how that works. We have a sheet of paper, and it has a pleat on it. And the paper is oriented in one direction. And if it is true, the pleat is folded in one direction. And if it is false, it is folded in the other direction. So this is how you can, you can, you can keep track of one true or false piece of information, the, the direction that the pleat is folding. And you obviously need an orientation on the piece of paper. We have this orientation from top to bottom. And now you can build a gadget. So this is an OR gate. So you have two pleats coming in, true and false. And it will fold true. So the, the rule is that the dashed lines, it has to be either flat, not folded at all, or it has to be a valley fold. And the solid lines, it can be not folded, but it has to be a mountain fold. It cannot fold in this direction because this, this is marked this way. This is how the rules work. So it says, so true, false, now this goes to true. If I flip this true to false, now it won't fold like this, flat like this. It'll keep standing up. This has to flip over to false in order to make it work. So this is how these gadgets work. And I have, for folks that are interested, we built NOR and NAND and 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 OR 
and we also built a knot. And um, actually, the hardest thing to prove was showing you could intersect two pleats and have them pass through one another without the value changing. That was surprisingly difficult. Um, and if you want to see how we model rule 110, well, you know, it's fairly straightforward. This is a single cell of rule 110. Oh, this one's, this, I put it upside down, it's this way. We have three inputs coming in, uh, A, B, and C. They merge here, go through a bunch of gates, and this is the output, and it is rule 110. So we can model it.